Speed is short. It's Maurice, right? It's Maurice, yes. And your division was 80... I would say the uh, Company G of the 85th Mountain Infantry. Okay, anytime. My name is Morris Murphy, uh, sometimes known as Speed. And I was in G Company, the 85th Mountain Infantry, the 10th Mountain Division, World War II. What, un um, what dates did you serve from? Uh, I came from Massachusetts originally. And your dates of service? We're from uh, March of 1943 to uh, August of 45. And the highest rank? I was a staff sergeant. Maybe you could talk a little bit about what your position as a staff sergeant entailed, Rosa. Well, I was a squad leader. And, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I eventually wound up as being the platoon guide. But, uh, um, Basically, you're in charge of 12 guys, 12 soldiers, and uh, you're supposed to take care of them. That was your job. And what does it involve taking care of them? Well, uh, for example, if you, you know, marching, you, you, you make sure they all stay up, and uh, if, uh, if one guy wanted to fall out, well, you might, you might Split up his load or something, you know. Do things like that. But uh, basically, it's taking care of uh, your fellow human beings. That's about it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, in combat, uh, your job is mostly to keep up morale, and uh, I think uh, I think it was very important that you. Uh, that you uh, uh, maintained a cheerful, well, cheerful, relatively speaking, a cheerful outlook on things and uh, and uh, kept things moving along. Well, what, what kept you going when times were very difficult? Uh, I think uh, I think a sense of, of responsibility to the rest of the group. You know. Uh, I think that's the basics, the, the only reason you're there. Although sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it was rather difficult. Are you well known for a heroic deed involving a grenade? Oh, grand? yeah. Now, this is a matter of public records, we you can't deny this. Now, would yeah. you like to, could you just tell us a little bit about what led up to that? And then maybe you won't oh, have to tell Well, me I'll tell you frankly, quite honestly, I don't really know what went on. And I, and I say that because this is a, a, a something that happened in the context of, what, six or eight seconds? And uh, I really, you know, all I know is, is there was a grenade on the, fell on the ground. Well, how about if you back it up and say where you were at the time? Well, we were in the schoolhouse in Campo Tesoro, Italy. And uh, we were basically back there to uh, reorganize from uh, the assault on uh, on uh, and what happened was the first sergeant told me that he wanted me to take out uh, the replacements and let them hear the guns go off, which basically was just getting them acclimated to the noise of, of battle. So apparently uh, they were going to take a saw up and, and uh, put us in where. Uh, you know, if they could hear the guns going off. Anyway, uh, so I had a box of an ammo box full of uh, hand grenades, and uh, and I don't know how the how the damn thing got uh, got uh, armed. I, I frankly don't know. The only we, we, we've speculated a lot, and. Uh, uh, I, I, my, I lean toward the theory that one of the kids picked up two of the grenades by the, by the rings and one of them slipped off, but I don't know that that's true or not. Uh, because some of those grenades, these, these were grenades that we had used up on, up on uh, Del Taracha, and, it, and some of them were, had the tape wrapped around the head, and some had the, the pins were crimped a little bit, I think, 
to slide easy. And I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's all speculation on my part. Uh, so, it fell, you know, I saw it there. I heard it go off. And I, uh, I took off with it, not knowing much where I was going. But fortunately, uh, there was a toilet, and uh, I, I rushed in there, figuring, I, well, I guess, I think I, that I thought that I could dump it, throw it down the toilet bowl or something, you know. And uh, there was a couple of guys in there, as I recall. I think that was what was happening. They were in there shaving, so I couldn't leave it there, so I had got it out the window. And I don't really know. Uh, they told me that uh, I held it out there, but uh, I don't know. I think I, I think I was trying to decide whether to throw it up on the roof or to drop it down. But you know, I ran out of time. It wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't a lot of time for making decisions. So anyway, that's the story that I, as I recall it. So the grenade went off. Yeah. And I staggered back into the room. And I, I think, I, I, I remember I had trouble holding my, keeping my balance. And uh, they, they finally grabbed me and put me down. And then a couple of medics came along and uh, hit me with some, morphine and I was in La La Land from there on out, so, you know. The final result of this was? That I had, well, that's what I got left. So, uh, say two. Now, prior to that, we had, uh, we had uh, uh, gone up onto Riva Ridge. And, uh, yeah, well, we'd, no, it was Monte Spigolino. Monte Spigolino, we'd gone up from the Cotigliano, Cotigliano side of the, uh, of the mountains and uh, knocked out a, uh, we knocked out a German outpost up there that had been watched. And, and Monte Spigolino was right at the head of Riva Ridge is at the south end of River Ridge. It's, it's the beginning of River Ridge. And uh, they had a, uh, they had a, uh, uh, well, uh, a hidden shack, or whatever you want to call it, there, that they observed our movements through the valley down below, which was our uh, marshalling headquarters. So, and we, uh, we were in on that. And then, of course, we were in on uh, uh, Belvedere, Gorgolesco, all the way down the mountain. When you look back on those battle experiences that you just mentioned, um, can you tell me a memorable incident that pops out at you? Yeah, well, oh, there's, there's, a, there's an interesting uh, sidelight. Uh, you know what crampons are? Well, we were probably the only unit in the United States Army that ever used crampons. And we used them on that assault I was just talking about on, on uh, Monte Spigolino. But we had to go over uh, Cornwall Alaskali and, and uh, we, we started down at the foot of the mountains near, uh, <clears throat> near Lozano in, in uh, Pistoia. And we went up a valley. We got up on the summit and we moved down the summit line for a period of maybe well, we got there at dawn, so we must have been going five, six, eight hours maybe. And uh, we, organi we organized a, uh, a, a, sk a, a skirmish line on a, on a cornice that overlooked their position. And uh, of course, when they came out, we started firing, and they started firing back, and uh, so we knocked. We, we finally knocked off the uh, position. So I, threw a, I threw a hand grenade into the... <laughs> no, it was a concussion grenade. I threw a concussion grenade into their living quarters. 
And of course, is every is every you know, as we as you want. I it was some years later I was thinking about it and I said what we should have done was punched a hole in the roof, so they couldn't use it again. But we were young, impressionable, and green, and we didn't. So that's uh, my whole story. Now, uh, can you think of something? that you'll wish you had said later. <laughs> later on, you'll say, boy, I sure wish I'd said this story. Uh, no, I can't think of anything right now, but I'll think of it later. <laughs> no, no, I always do. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... <laughs> I do, I always do. Well, that's the three speeches, you know. That's the one you, the one you uh, are going to give, the one you assemble, the one you give, and the one you should have given. That's always a... The story of the three speeches, so there you go. Well, that was my thing. You didn't ask him about the 10th Mountain Division, you know, just what his thoughts were overall. Oh. Um, oh. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you thought the 10th Mountain Division contributed? Yes, I, th I thought, I think that uh, we did uh, uh, contribute a lot of young energy to a stalemated and, and a tired front. I think that the front was very tired. I think all the units had been pretty well played out. And when we came out full of uh, pea and vinegar, uh, you know, it kinda, I think it re-energized the whole front, uh, or at least the U.S. side of it. Uh, I can't speak for the uh, English, but uh, uh, yeah, I think that was our, our major contribution was, and the fact that we, uh, uh, we're able to move through the mountains so swiftly. I know that the uh, Germans mentioned that, that uh, in uh, Truska's book or, or Clark's book, uh, he mentions the fact that the Germans marveled at our ability to move through the mountains. So I, I'll have to defer to <laughs> higher rank than I possess. But overall, I, I thought we did a really fine job, and, and uh, uh, I kind of feel badly that General Wolf and and uh, and Foss and uh, Alan Dulles couldn't have come to an agreement earlier, but they didn't, and we lost men, a lot of good men. Anyhow, that's it. That's very good. Okay, here we go.